Hello and welcome to another episode from Cultivated World, the channel that brings you the good stuff. As we all know, Wimbledon was cancelled this year due to the pandemic. You cannot be serious! Well, that doesn't mean we can't appreciate the Rolex date just with the so-called Wimbledon dial. Along with the Submariner, the Rolex Datejust is one of the most recognisable watches ever created. The Datejust is an absolute icon of a watch and is known even to those who don't call themselves horophiles. Launched in 1945 to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Rolex, the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust was the first self-winding waterproof chronometer wristwatch to display the date in the window at 3 o'clock on the dial. Well, that's what it says on the Rolex website. To put it simply, this was the first watch with a date display. This innovative concept from Rolex was not only more aesthetically pleasing, but it was also much easier to read the time and date at a glance. Over the years, Rolex has continued to develop the Datejust but has always remained true to the original concept. Essentially, a three-handed watch with a date window at three o'clock. Rolex created Datejust models with various different metals, including steel, white gold, yellow gold, and rose gold, and also created them in a range of different sizes. Currently, the Datejust is available in 31, 36, and 41 millimeter sizes. Where the case, bezel, and bracelet have had limited options, Rolex allowed themselves to experiment with a slew of different dial materials and designs, with some being more popular and seeing more success than others. Some of our favorite dials over the years include the sunbeam dial, the tapestry dial, and the linen dial, which we'll be reviewing in an upcoming video, so please subscribe to ensure you don't miss out on that one. Today, we are looking at the Datejust 41 model reference 126334. Rolex would describe this as a white rotosaur model. This is Rolex talk for a steel and white gold combination, the bezel being an 18 karat white gold. With the sharp angles of the bezel, the white gold absolutely glistens and reflects beautifully in the light. When the fluted bezel was introduced by Rolex, it was initially created with form following function. It was designed to be used to screw the bezel and case back against the middle case using special Rolex tools in order to guarantee the waterproofness of the watch. As time passed and Rolex changed their methods, the fluted bezel became a purely stylistic choice and a key characteristic associated with Rolex. Another notable Rolex characteristic is the Cyclops lens. Named after the fearless one-eyed giant of Greek mythology, the Cyclops lens was first introduced on the Datejust in 1953. The Cyclops lens magnifies the date by 2.5 times, offering even greater legibility. There are many people who dislike the Cyclops lens and think it makes the watch look fussy. However, the Datejust has been the best-selling model line since 1945, so who are we to disagree? Haters gonna hate, and ainers gonna ain't. There was an added bonus to the Cyclops lens, as it was very difficult to copy, and made it very difficult for counterfeiters to replicate. If the Cyclops lens did not magnify the date by 2.5 times, it used to be a surefire way to sell a Rolex was a fake. Now, let's talk about the main event, that dial. Featuring 
A somber slate dial adorned with black Roman numerals which are edged in Rolex signature green. Now, on paper, this idea sounds completely awful. But just look at it. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. The way the light reflects off the sunburst style and the green highlights around the black Roman numerals are proportioned just perfectly. This adds that little bit of zing, that X factor, so to speak, to an otherwise more ordinary looking dial design. This dial is affectionately known by the watch community as the Wimbledon dial. Now, Rolex never really releases any limited editions. However, Rolex are very, very good at marketing a particular watch model in association with a special event or a notable person. This plants a seed in our heads and we come up with a story all by ourselves and we end up with something called the Wimbledon dial. Rolex do not officially call this the Wimbledon dial and there is no mention of this on their website. However, this name definitely works. The green highlights on the dial evokes thoughts of the lush, perfectly cut grass on centre court at Wimbledon and the memory of Roger Federer winning his impressive 8th Wimbledon title and wearing the Rolex Datejust while lifting that trophy. This version of the Datejust is fitted with the modern interpretation of the Jubilee bracelet which is a world away from the Jubilee bracelets of old. The links are solid and feel indestructible and will be much more resilient to stretching. The other option would be to opt for the Oyster bracelet. However, I feel this to be synonymous with the Rolex professional models rather than a more dressy watch. The Jubilee bracelet is arguably more comfortable as the bracelet is made up of five smaller links that wrap and contour around the wrist more ergonomically. It also has the added bonus of not showing up any scratches so obviously. Both the Oyster bracelet and the Jubilee bracelet feature the Easy Link extension, allowing five millimeters of adjustment on the fly without the use of any tools. As the Datejust 41 name suggests, the case size is 41 millimeters, but it's much slimmer than most of the professional models in the lineup. At under 12 millimeters thick, this watch wears small and would slip under a shirt cuff very easily. The movement is the in-house COSC certified caliber 3235. This is a self-winding movement and has an impressive power reserve of 70 hours. In my opinion, the Datejust 41 on a Jubilee is the more smart bracelet choice and would set it apart from the more casual watches in your collection. Despite that, it is still a very versatile design that will be just at home being worn dressed down and more casually. The flash of colour on the dial raises the game and differentiates it from more plain dials on the market, allowing it to show some unique character without straying too far from the proven formula. In conclusion, Rolex has done a fantastic job with this model and we'd have to say game, set, match. What do you think about the Datejust 41 with the Wimbledon dial? Do you think it would have looked better on the Oyster bracelet rather than the Jubilee? What about the fluted bezel? Do you think it would have looked better with the smooth bezel? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like watches as much as we do, 
and want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon.